Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to the sixth Pi Open GL with Pi Games tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is making lots of cubes. So, the idea is how can we have a lot of cubes in space, in space, but in our space, in our 3D environment, um, that for us to avoid. So, to do that, uh, we're going to make a new function, and this function is going to work based off of like this list of vertices. So we're happy with this, like this list of vertices creates a cube for us. How might we create another cube that's the same size and shape as this cube, but maybe in a different, different area? Well, what we would do is we could, we could add or subtract from these numbers. You can add or subtract the same amount from the X across the board and the same amount from the Y across the board and the same amount from the Z across the board. Now you've got another cube. So. Um, you know, from, from all of the vertices in this cube, by the way. So anyways, let's make a function that does that. And then what we can do is we can use that function to create lots of cubes, and then we can place them and then fly through them and see wh um, what other problems arise. Um, and while this won't, this will work, but it's going to be really laggy. Um, and while that's a problem right now, I'll show you guys how we can kind of do some finessing with all of this and come up with a pretty darn good product. But anyway, um, so first we're gonna make a new function and it's gonna be called define set underscore vertices, vertices like that. And um, the parameter that I think we'll pass through here will be a parameter called max distance. And what max distance is gonna be is, is how far do we want this to go? So let's say we wanted to play the game and we want the camera to travel a maximum distance of 300, okay? What we could do is we could predefine all of this, almost like you would have predefined like a video game course, right, for a racing game. So the whole course is already there, like it's predefined, it's not generated and random for you. So let's see if we can if we can get away with something like that. So we would say maybe uh, x, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come through and we're just going to we're going to change all the vertices. And to do that, all you have to do is you, you just need to modify all the X's, Y's, and Z's the same, but you don't have to modify like all X's the same amount as you modify the Y's, right? So, so we'll make a random change for each of those, basically. So we would say X underscore value underscore change, and we'll say that equals a random dot rand range, negative 10 to 10. So that'll go... Uh, negative 10 to one side and then 10 to the other side somewhere in between there so obviously if we move the character or the ship or whatever you're envisioning us as the main character being uh, if we move past the negative 10 mark we will be outside of the range of cubes so like I was saying before one method that programmers were used to solve this is just by creating a wall and if you hit the wall you crash you die um, I don't like that I want to do infinity so we're gonna do it but uh, We'll get to that. So anyway, y value change uh, will be the exact same thing, right? Random dot rand range negative ten and ten, and then finally z value change. This one will be a little different, but it'll be random dot rand range, and then basically this will be a rand range of negative one uh, times uh, max distance. And then, and then we'll also start them at negative 20. So, so this is a range from the max distance we'll say we want to cover is 300. So this will be negative 1 times 300, so negative 300, all the way to negative 20. That means, because as our camera moves, we're moving into depth, right? So we're, we're doing negatives. Um, so uh, we'll start cubes at negative 20. That's so we have like a second uh, to react, you know? So, so those would be the, the value changes of the vertices. And now what we want to do is we want to actually create um, this set of vertices. And then we'll return this set. So we'll come down here and we'll just say new underscore vertices. And we'll say equals an empty, uh, empty list there. And then uh, we'll say uh, for vert in vertices, uh, what do we want to do? And... Um, yeah, I've just, just come to the realization that uh, I forgot to mention, I have been misspelling vertices a lot. You can even see that I've done it here. I spelled it right here. 
Um, I don't know, just a mental problem with me. So anyway, let's go ahead and fix vertices. And in fact, let's just highlight highlight vertices spelled incorrectly. If you've been spelling it incorrectly, if you're smart and you haven't been spelling it incorrectly, good for you. Vertices, and then we're gonna replace. So uh, to do find and replace, you can do Control H, and that'll bring up this find and replace law uh, dialog here. And then we can find and replace all horribly spelled vertices with good spelled vertices. Replace all, and that should cover it. We might find ourselves with an error, but I don't think so. That should do it. Um, new vertices, set vertices. Uh, verse. Okay, so we should be good, but if not, we'll cover that when we come to that. So for vert in vertices, now we're going to say new vert equals an empty set. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're going we're gonna to come up with this new list of all of the vertices. Each vertice contains... Um, so you've basically you've got a cube, right? And this is cube. Then you've got within your cube you've got a vertex, and within each vertex you have a coordinate like x, y, and z. So that's what we're we're trying to do. We're pulling this apart. So for each vertice, for each vert in vertices, what do we want to do? So each vert in vertices is really each vertex. So that's this. So that's where we are at the moment. So new vert, we're going to say is empty for now. And then we're going to just say new underscore x uh, equals vert 0, so the first element, plus x underscore value underscore change. And now basically we do this, copy that, paste, paste, and then x, y, z. And then instead of vert 0, that's vert 1, vert 2, and then x, so this is y change, and then z value change. Done. Now, we'll go ahead and do new underscore vert dot append uh, new underscore x. Then we'll go ahead and copy this, paste, paste. So now we're appending the x, the y, and the z. So this created that, that coordinate change. Now we're appending the x, the y, and the z coordinates to a new vert, or new vert which is a whole vertex. Then, um, from there, we go uh, new underscore vertices. Oh my goodness, I spelled the camera wrong. Um, dot append new underscore vert. So now we've got a whole uh, vertex definition there. Um, and then we're done there. And basically we're doing that for each vertex. We're defining a new vertex definition. Then when we're all done, we can what we can do is we can return new underscore vertices like that. And, uh, and that returns a new vertices list or vertices tuple uh, for a new cube. So now that we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and add that uh, to our actual um, script here. So we'll come down to main and what we can do is we can keep the original one um, well we're not going to really use it probably but in main basically we've got x move y move now let's go ahead and we're going to predefine um, max underscore distance we'll say that's 300 for now I don't recall if we already I know I said 300 but I don't think we defined it anywhere no so max distance equals 300 and then uh, we'll come down, and then we're going to say cube underscore dict. And that's going to be a cube dictionary. Um, so we'll say cube dict. It's empty for now. Um, but we've notified Python that it is a dict. And then we can do something like this. We can say 4x in range. And then we can say 75. So this will run 75 times. And we're going to do cube dict x. So so this would be like, you know, cube dict one is is equal to what? And then we're gonna say set vertices and then max distance. So what this is gonna do is for each uh, cube in this dictionary, the keys will be basically like one, two, three, four, all the way up to 75. Those will be the keys. And then the value will be a new set of vertices for a cube. So that when we're done here, we'll have a 75 long dictionary of just random cubes somewhere within negative uh, 10 and 10 for the x and y and somewhere within a depth of negative 20 to negative 300. So we'll have 75 cubes that we're going to draw here. So what this is going to do is basically we populate a cube dict, 
But now we actually need to take cubedict and throw it at OpenGL and have it pop out some cubes for us. So now we'll come down um, basically to where we're calling cube. And instead of uh, cube, we could do something like this. We could just say uh, for each underscore cube in cube underscore dict, what do we want to do? We want to do cube, but we need cube to accept another parameter, which would be something like this, cube dict, and then each underscore cube. Okay, so we need to modify the cube function to basically handle um, new vertices that it's not, uh, you know, comfortable with basically. So let's go up to the cube function here because right now cube um, basically goes to vertices vertex. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I think we could actually get away uh, with doing this vertices. Um, I think that would work, but we've got for surface and surfaces. In theory, that's okay because the nodes would stay the same for vertex. Let's go ahead and run this and just see what happens. Um, my mind says that should work, but uh, we'll find out, I suppose. Okay, cool. So it's, it's looking like it's working out. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so now we're moving within this field. Uh oh, we lost, lost all our cubes. That worked so well for such a short time. I think it's because uh, the object passed. Let's uh, get rid of object passed. Right? Yes. Oh, and the other thing too, for X and Red, yeah, we got a couple of things here to fix. So again, well, instead of while not object passed, let's go ahead and just return this to being while true. So it's just gonna run indefinitely. We'll go ahead and get rid of object passed. Eventually we'll say while not crashed or something like that, but we'll just cancel that for now. And then we'll go ahead and delete this code as well. And then finally, we don't need X and range anymore. We'll just run main. Eventually main will run in infinitely until we crash. Let's refresh. Uh, okay. We'll wait a second. I think we start at negative 50 or something. Okay, so here we got some cubes popping up. We'll see how we do. We're navigating the cubes. Awesome. It's a pretty laggy and it's laggy because of the amount of cubes that we've drawn. But as you can see, we're at least, you know, uh, we're making progress towards the goal that we want, but yes, it is quite laggy. Now, what could we do to, to remedy this? Well, right now, we basically, all of the cubes are actually here. Even the ones, watch out for those cubes. Even First of all, the ones that we can't even see yet are there. And then the cubes that are behind us are still behind us. If we had a way to rotate this camera around, um, we would see the cubes behind us. Um, and so obviously that's that's not ideal. Uh, so so that's a, a little bit of a problem for processing. Also, we have 75 cubes, but right now we see basically eight cubes on the screen, and now like five cubes, six cubes, something like that. So so we're, we're basically kind of not necessarily rendering, but we're kind of like we've got like. 75 cubes of memory when really we need maybe 10 cubes at most at any given time and now we've obviously we've hit probably 300 and ran out of space um but yeah in any one in any one moment we really only need to be processing you know somewhere between five and ten cubes so what we can do next um and probably in another video but what we can what we can do is first of all if we've passed the cube we can just pop that right out of the cube dictionary. We don't need it anymore. So we can pop them away. And then also what we can do is we can basically dynamically create cubes that were are right about to be shown and then basically always have like this rolling list of about 10 to 15 cubes. Some are just about to show up. 10 to 15 cubes and that that just cycles. So now we just have 10 to 15 cubes because if I did for x or let's say our max distance is 100 and then we said x in range um, 20, we'll refresh this and we'll, we should find that it's much less laggy and it is much less laggy than before. Now I record in I think seven or 10 frames per second so it, it will look worse on the video than it does for you. Um, but that was very smooth for me. The navigation for me was very smooth. Everything was much smoother. So we can see that we can get away with 20 cubes in memory and, and showing them, but we can't get away with 75. That's just too much. And depending on, you know, your computer, 
you might have even a much even lower number or even maybe a higher number than I can get away with. So obviously something to keep in mind. So anyways, that's going to conclude this this video getting a little long here. So uh, anyway, that's obviously something we're going to work on and especially having a dynamic dictionary where we remove stuff and we don't basically we don't preload too much and we remove stuff that we've passed and that will help processing a lot. So anyway, that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and stay tuned to the next video.